This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Thank you, Coach. Um, so on Saturday, there was a play where Preston Williams caught a touchdown pass down the sideline. It looked like the cornerback sat down over here in a zone and the safety didn't get over. What's supposed to happen on that play? Yeah, I don't, uh, I'm not going to get into specifics on what's supposed to happen on uh, a given offense, defense, or special teams play. Um, you know, Blew the cover. It, there's a lot uh, – there's a lot that goes into a specific play, you know, uh, you know, was it a blown coverage? Was it not a blown coverage? Was it a metal error? Um, you know, what you guys say, see may be a little deceiving at, at times. Um, so we'll just, uh, we'll leave it at that. You know, there was a lot of pressure on the play with the ball had gotten off. You know, what'd you think about that part of Orlando? <laughs> So, you know, that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's kind of, I mean, there's, there's situations that, that come up like that in practice, um, in a game setting, what does that look like? Um, but yeah, I mean, we got to do a better job defending the deep part of the field. Um, but you know, the offense executed and made a, made a good throw and good catch. Omar. Coach, there's, uh, I, I'm sure you've, you're aware of a lot of testing irregularities that I guess they stem from New Jersey. I'm not necessarily certain if they impact you, but how concerned are you that uh, the testing is keeping the environment safe for you, your team? And also with schools opening back up, I don't know about your kids in particularly, but are you concerned that there could be another wave of, of COVID outbreaks? Uh, well, I, I'm really concerned with, you know, us, our team, and, you know, those decisions that we're making in the building, outside of the building. I think if we do the, the you know, take the appropriate, you know, distancing measures and wear the mask and uh, make responsible choices, you know, that's, again, like I've said, you know, since day one, that's the best we can do. Um, so it's up to us individually um, to make those smart decisions. Um, as far as, you know, the irregularities, um, you know, over the weekend, look at the, the league, uh, look, this is a moving target. I mean, we've talked about that since, since day one. Um, I think the league has protocols in place, um, uh, to, uh, um, uh, they've got protocols in place and basically what we do is just follow the protocols. And I think that's what every team does. And I think if you do that, um, you know, from a testing standpoint, um, you know, you may, you know, may lose a player for a day. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, uh, for the safety of the entire team organization, um, you know, that's a small sacrifice, you know, to make sure that everyone's, um, you know, safe and healthy. So I think from a protocol standpoint, the league's done a good job. Um, you know, it can be frustrating on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, when a guy's out and it could be, you know, an unconfirmed positive, uh, but I think, you know, we're, we're proceeding with caution as we should, you know, uh, I think, I think we know how, uh, how quickly this can spread. So um, I, I think we should use caution and you know, the, the league's kind of uh, the protocols in place so that, 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 that you know, is the way it's done. And, and, you know, we, we're just following the protocols as a, as a team and organization. Now, let me tell you something. This is going to be a hell of a challenge uh, because this is something we didn't think about, right? We're thinking about these guys hitting each other, sweaty, breathing on each other, tackling each other in, in, in meeting rooms, all that stuff where COVID could, you know, tr you know, can 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 go from one person to another because we all know it's in fact, uh, Usain Bolt just tested positive for coronavirus, which proves that the virus is also really fast because it can catch Bolt. Um, but listen, you look at it and. This is a factor that we didn't think about. Remember, there is no bubble in the NFL. So players have to go back to their homes. How about those players that have kids and their kids are going to school? Oh, my Lord. That just raises it to another level that your kid, I mean, I don't know about you. I'm, I, I, I don't have kids at a young age anymore. I only have one. I have a daughter. 
unless I have some other kids somewhere else that I don't know anything about, which I don't think that's the case. But I, I think last time I checked, I have one daughter, I think. Pretty sure of that. And she's old already. At the, not, not old like me, but old like she's not in school, like she's in college. So it's a whole different ballgame. She's doing everything virtual. But if I had a child that was in, you know, the, the 12 grades, I, I, there's no way that they would go to school. No way. They would be virtual. They would learn virtually. Forget that, dude. And so can you imagine those that are sending their kids to school also? That's going to be a hell of a challenge to, to stay away from this coronavirus. All right, continue, Bill, please. Al? Hello, Brian. Um, I'm sure that uh, you didn't get as much of a look at Andrew Van Ginkle last season as you would have liked. But in the time that he was on the field, what did he show you that tells you that he might be able to contribute heavily uh, this season on your defense? Well, you know, Andrew's a, a tough kid. Um, he's got length. He's got some speed. Um, I thought he did a, a, a solid job for us in the kicking game a year ago. Um, you know, over the last uh, six games of the season, um, he's a smart kid. It's very important to him. Uh, and he's improving and getting better. Um, so, you know, he'll, he'll hopefully get some opportunities. Uh, you know, well, he'll get some opportunities definitely throughout training camp, and we'll see what happens um, you know, when we get to uh, um, you know, the regular season. And uh, he's improving. He's getting better. And uh, you know, I'm very – I'm happy with where he is. Cam? Hey, Flo, uh, we, we all saw, I guess, last year how Preston got hurt. And I noticed, I guess, in the first couple practices, he was taking punt return reps. And then he wasn't, I guess, in the days after. Were you guys on him as a punt returner? Is he still doing that? Or is he done with that? Well, I mean, anyone who can return punts, you know, we're going we're gonna to work him back there. Um, Preston, obviously, with the, uh, with the uh, injury a year ago, um, that's he's somebody we, we, we've kind of, you know, we're just trying to be, um, I don't want to say cautious. That's probably the wrong word, but um, we want to watch his reps and watch the amount of, uh, uh, watch the amount of reps that we're, we're putting on him. Uh, he's working hard. He wants to be out there. He wants to return every punt. He wants to go out there for every, uh, uh, really every snap. If we didn't, you know, if we didn't manage him, he would, you know, he'd be out there every play. So, um, this uh, coming off a knee, we, we've got to manage them, which we've done uh, in the punt return, you know, as part of that management. Now, look, uh, he's answering everything like a coach. He's leaving it all out there, uh, out in the open, because he has to. He has to lay that foundation that if you're on the Dolphins, you're a Dolphins football player. And if we need you here, we'll use you here. And if we need you there, we'll, we'll use you there. He's not going to tell the media what his real plan is for Preston Williams. But let me take a stab at all of this, okay? Let me just take a shot here, okay? I don't think the coach is using him at all at punt returns. The only reason Preston Williams will be out at punt returns is when the others are injured. And they are either injured and out, or not, or the one guy you have left that can punt return. You didn't activate him, unfortunately, for this game. The guys you were using got injured. You got to go use Preston for the moment. So what they're doing is they're giving Preston Williams reps as a punt returner just so he's fresh with the reps, with the routes that he has to, or the lanes he has to choose, the play that's designed, whatever it is. And that way he's familiar with it but he's your starting wide receiver. He's a playmaker, okay? He is a guy that's going to be running routes on every single down. Last year, you were desperate. You had to find out what you had in him, and you found out already what he is. And what he isn't, he's not a great pun returner. He's a serviceable pun returner, okay? Because he's not shifty enough. He's not quick enough to change directions and then from flat-footed out to just have incredible burst. He's a big guy 
that takes a little while to get those strides going. And when he does, he can pull away from you. He can, he's got some speed. But I don't believe at all that Preston Williams will be your punt returner unless it's out of desperation. So what you see out there right now is just a coach and a special teams coach saying, let's plan for the worst case scenario. We don't want Preston Williams out there, but if we have no choice because we've got nobody else, he has the experience, let's bring him in. He's got the hands. He'll possess the ball for us. He'll, he's a big body and at least will maintain possession, and we don't have to put somebody out there that's all wide-eyed, never done it before, and then bobbles and you know what I mean? Preston will not do that. There you go. It, it, for those of you that are old Dolphin fans, there was a kid by the name of Miller that was a returner. Scott Miller, I think it was. I think his first name was Scott. Sucked as a returner, okay? Surely loved him and used him because he wouldn't drop the ball. And Shula told you that much, too. He goes, you know, I don't really have the, the guy I need, but I know that he is sure-handed. And we hated him as a doll fan. I think it was Scott Miller. I, I know it was Miller. But what we hated was you had no shot at getting a big return from the guy. White kid. Yeah, white average, kid. Average, like, two or three yards of punt return. White kid, that. Brown, brown hair that would yeah, come out of the— Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, Miller. And so, it, it, you know, young fans, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But this is what happens when you're 50-something, that you've seen everything. And so Miller was a kid that was like that, you know, in a way. And I'm not – I don't want to diss Preston to that extreme, but I'm not expecting Preston Williams to run a lot of punts back for a touchdown. Okay, he's a big guy. He's easy to – he's an easy target, you know what I'm saying, and on special teams. All right, let's continue with Mr. Flores. Stop it. Coach, how are you? I wanted to ask, uh, how was the team's time at the stadium on Sunday? Uh, I guess what was the process there um, with having your walkthrough in the stadium? How, how did you feel like your, your players responded to being in the stadium for the first time? It's good. I think we need to, you know, a lot of guys, we had a lot of new players. You know, they've never been there. They've never seen our locker room. They've, um, they don't know where the training room is or where the equipment room is or, you know, where the showers are or, um, you know, how we walk out to the tunnel, you know, I think it's, it's good to get out there, you know, it's our home stadium. So where's the, uh, where's the game clock? Where's the 40 second clock? I think those things, you know, as a coaching staff to check the headsets and, you know, do a dry run from that standpoint. Um, you know, I thought it was good. I thought we got a lot out of it. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's always good to go to the stadium and, you know, get on the grass there and, um, you know, get a feel for where we're going to actually, you know, uh, play the games that we're preparing, um, you know, in so much for. And we're putting all this hard work and energy into these practices. Uh, it's good to get out there, and, you know, even in a walkthrough setting to, to, to kind of feel the atmosphere of being at the stadium. So I think we got a lot out of it. Hey, wait a minute. Bill, uh, Bill did, did, did the coach. ask you about Nate Holly. Um, you got to pause there a second. Did, did, did he just say get on the grass? Is that what the coach just said? I really like Bud. Oh, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Go ahead. Continue. I'm sorry. A few teams that were in on him. Did you make a sales pitch for your part of the recruiting? And uh, what position is he going to play for the Dolphins? Um, you know, Nate's uh, obviously had a um, good year in the CFL uh, a year ago. Um, he's fast. He's tough. Um, you know, as far as positions, you know, right now we're just going to get him out there probably more in a, in a safety role, safety slash special team, but he's played some linebacker. So, um, you know, look, his role is going to be what he makes it, like we tell all the, all the, all the, uh, all the players on the team. Um, you know, I don't, I don't consider myself a, uh, I don't, I'm not a really good recruiter. Um, so that's not, you know, uh, I mean, that's, 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 no, that wasn't my role in this. Uh, but, you know, he came in, he worked out, he did a good job on the workout. Um, you know, I think, you know, an opportunity to play on any NFL teams is a, is a, is a it's a privilege. So um, he took the opportunity and, you know, we're happy to have him. Nate Holly uh, signed and he's a special teams guy, a safety. It doesn't sound to me 
when you listen to that conversation, they don't really expect him to become a impactful player at linebacker almost. You see the safety part. You see the special teams part. So this is a guy that's probably an undersized linebacker, and that's why they're going to play him probably more strong safety also is what I kind of get the feeling because if you're going from linebacker, I doubt you're going to free and you're going to be playing center field. You know what I'm saying? So it's probably more of a strong safety type, special teamer, and the difference with a Nate Holly nowadays, I know Sam Aguavon has done a decent job and, and maybe he's proven to be a, a, a capable backup maybe at best, but the beauty is that as Dolphin fans, we have Cam Wake, right? And we have Mark Dixon. We have two guys that you unearthed from CFL, and those are guys they gave you, I mean, Cam Wake obviously had a ring of honor type run pretty much with the Miami Dolphins. And Mark Dixon is not going to make the ring of honor, but he is a guy that I think we all have a, a deep, deep, deep appreciation for because of the short career he had in Miami, but it was an impactful career here uh one of my favorite dudes of all time is mark dixon just a great dude not because he not because he was like this electrifying type of personality or anything like that but he was such a good player a great teammate right a guy that sacrificed for the team you know he 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 excelled at guard and one year they threw him out to tackle when richmond webb left and so when we hear of the Nate Hollies and the Sam Aguavons, and you're a Miami Dolphins fan, you remember that, hey, the CFL can produce a couple guys that could turn out to be, you know, real gems for you. So I'm not saying Nate Holly will be, but you never know. And with the CFL canceling their season this year, there's got to be somebody that's there that could translate to the NFL and help out. It might be Nate Holly. You never know. So that's a guy I definitely keep my eye on is every time we get a guy from the CFL, I keep an eye on him because just in case he might be the next Mark Dixon or how about this next Cam Wake? That would be amazing. Hi, Coach. uh, How often does Ryan Fitzpatrick do something that makes you forget that he's 37 years old? Um. You know, probably every day, you know, I'm 39 and uh, it's hard to think that I could go out there and, um, you know, get in a huddle and run around with these guys, you know, as much as he does. So, um, look, it's a testament to the way he works in the off season and, you know, his work ethic and, you know, his, his, his talent and ability. So, um, he's a good player. Um, he's a competitive guy. Um, he's smart and he just has, you know, good feel for, you know, the quarterback position. He's got good leadership, so probably every day. We got time for a couple more. Uh, Joe Shedd. Good morning, Flo. <clears throat> we saw X working on the side the other day. I was wondering how he came out of that, how he's doing. Well, obviously, X, you know, he was out. We just got him back off the, um, well, back into the building. Um, so he's just working his way back. I mean, that's it's early. Um, so just, you know, from a conditioning standpoint, getting your legs back, um, you know, it's very early. So um, we're just going to keep, you know, prog- you know, try to progress this, you know, one day at a time. Um, and when we feel or if we feel like he's ready, then we'll, uh, you know, we'll make a transaction. But that's that conversation, you know, myself, Chris, Brandon, uh, the coaching staff, the training staff, the strength and conditioning staff, just to kind of see where he's at from a uh, from a conditioning standpoint from a health standpoint um, you know hopefully get him back as soon as possible there you go look it, there's too much we look too much into this tour thing we we overanalyze it oh my god he's struggling and he's a rookie he has had no off season relax x has had no off season okay and he's coming back from knee injury and and the dude picked up covid there, they, there's no rush to get X on the field to practice, okay? You just need him to get conditioned, make sure his knee's fine, and then get him out there on the field for a game. And that's it. 
I'm not worried about X in any other way, shape, or form. And I'm not going to overreact. I know he's had several knee scopes and all that. I get it. I get it. It's It's been an issue for him. You know, and it's something that you can't predict. You just never know. It's not like he came in and he was, oh, no, this guy's got chronic knee issues. That wasn't the case. It's just something that's developed now as a player. Hey, look, not everybody is built to be in the NFL. In fact, most human bodies are not built to be in the NFL. So the fact that they break down is almost normal. When they don't break down, it is freakish. Okay? And let's wait till he actually takes the field. Or let's wait till he can't take the field. But right now, it's there's not any setbacks. It's COVID and rehab. It's not like, oh, no, he needed another scope. Oh, no, he's he, he he's limping still. Oh, no, he's that's not the case. So let's just relax a little bit. Give us some time. Go ahead, Bill. All right, last question, Ruthie. You kind of answered my question a little bit with Fitzy, but you kind of got a feel last week for what practice looks like when he's on the field versus what practice looks like when he's not on the field. What do you notice about the rest of the guys and the players when, when he's not out there compared to when he is? You know, uh, I, you know I don't want to, you know, dive too deep into, you know, the one day where Fitz was of the year and, you know, what it looks like with or without a guy. I think, you know, there's 11 guys on the field. That's something we talk about. We need 11 guys doing that, you know, uh, taking care of their responsibility, communicating, trying to execute at a high level, um, you know, not dropping the football, making sure we get our quarterbacks in an exchange. So um, regardless of who the quarterback is, whether it's Fitz, whether it's Josh, whether it's Tua, um, you know, there's 10 other guys on the field who have to uh, handle their responsibility. So, I mean, I don't want to play, you know, I don't want to talk, uh, go too or dive too deep into what it looks like with Fitz versus someone else. Um, you know, this isn't a one-man show. Uh, so uh, it's the responsibility of the players to kind of pick up the slack if somebody's, you know, out. Um, and look, I mean, it's a pandemic. So guys, guys could be out, you know, if we're going to say, hey, and this is for any team. If one guy's out, one guy's being out means that, you know, we're going to – fall apart then you know it's going to be a long season you know not for just for us but for a lot of teams i don't think anybody's taking that approach we're not taking that approach with with our team either uh to include myself you know coaches players i mean it's, uh, we, we got to be ready just to, to, for the next guy to step up and, and, and perform um because we're going to need everybody in 2020. there you thank go thank you coach um Okay, there you go. That is the that that is uh that is uh coach Flores and I got to tell you something. He's he's a smart dude. He understands that if he answers Ruthie Polinski's question and 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 the way maybe Ruthie was hoping or the writers were hoping or anybody in the media to add some juicy comments to it like Coach says team's in trouble when Fitz doesn't play. You know, that's what would happen in that headline. And he's not going – and you notice how he said what I said, that he's not going to overreact about one day that Fitz wasn't around. Um, that Because a couple of hours of somebody not being at practice and, and, and a third-year player that's a second year in a new system – and and a rookie and two guys that have not turned the corner yet and they're supposed to like be seamless and and they're supposed to like pick up where 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 Fitz left off when they don't have a fraction of, of his experience it's ridiculous that's why i did not get crazy at all of this and 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 what's it called in and going overboard, oh, my God, the tour didn't look good and that Josh didn't look good and all. Give me a break, dude. It's one stinking practice with no offseason with any of these guys. Give it some time. Let's. None of this happens overnight. Raekwon Davis is not going to develop overnight into a monster. It's going to take him a while, and hopefully he gets there. Hey, Wilkins didn't start off strong last year. 
as the season got on, went on, Christian Wilkins got better. I'm expecting actually a big leap from him this year after what I saw at the end of last year. I think he's going to be a heck of a player this year. You know what I mean? But it, 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 whether it's Noah, Noah's going to go out there and he's probably going to show you some flashes. He's going to make a bunch of mistakes. He's a first-round pick. I, I, I don't think people, you know, Pat Sertan did not get on the field the first year. He struggled. I was there. I covered him. So it's there's this is something that's not out of you know the norm. And coach has been around long enough to not get baited by questions, right? And then two to know that you you have psychologically you are working on on eighty players right now. And the last thing you want to do is demean anybody or put them at a point that they feel like they are a non-factor and they've got no shot. And that's what you would do with answering that question. Say, yeah, no, we really struggled uh, with outfits. Our team really was lost. And he wasn't going to do that. And that was really smart on his part. 